So in this video, I will go over the apply wash command. So this command seeks to take in input data from your drill holes or an STC file, as we saw with that first step. Apply wash, load stratocalc file or .stc. We'll go off with our selected drill files. So I've reloaded some path settings. You may not get such a full screen. Uh, but I will delete things and simulate what it's going to look like. So starting off, I'll just kind of go over what each area here does. Uh, inputs, these are everything you will be inputting. And then outputs, the only concern you have to have. This is informational display mostly, these three zones. That is uh, when you're outputting your stratocalc file or FTC file. Um, wash file settings. This is for loading in the dot wash files that we created in the define wash. You can load in multiple files at once because you may often have uh, you know, many wash files that were performed on different input material types. You may have one wash file per drill hole. It just depends on your ability to sample uh, your material. So uh, there I loaded in five files, but we'll start off with one and discuss some concepts and then you know, go into something else as well. So minimum density, this is if we pull up, you know, this is saying the minimum density that you require a file to have it. It needs to at least have this. And we will only look at, you know, the targets, the density targets that are above this. And then max density, we will only look at targets which are below this. So here our files range from 1.5 to 1.8 with a 0.5 step in between. So here I have 1.79 set as the maximum density we'll consider. If I do 1.8, that opens up. And we see it didn't go directly 1.79, it goes to 1.75, the next spot we have information. So these are the targets you set. This is the actual you have. The number of float levels needs to be at least two. So if we set three, if we try and set below two, it'll just pop back up to two. So that means uh, with the washing, we at least, uh, going back to here, we're going to need two float rows and one sink row to make that possible. The reason for that is um, the reason for that is we do we perform some linear interpolation on our floats and sink points. So we will have given a point here and a point there if you only had two nodes, and we will interpolate on a straight line between those two points what your values are going to be. And if you only had uh, one float level, one information of 1.8, we couldn't for the float curve, you know, project a line because we only have that one point and it would crash. So you need at least two float levels to perform our analysis. Okay, that is everything. Um, here, a uh, number of files, you don't enter a target. That's just telling you how many uh, were loaded in. And now, if we uh, load in multiple files, it may tell you, you know, this, depending on your requirements, a file wasn't used. So here we have loaded in four files, only three wash files were used based on our requirements. And the actual, it's just like, you know, that it's, this is actually an average. This will be a true actual of the minimum density in all of the files. And uh, yeah. Um, Okay, and then what just came on the screen before, before when we only had one file, this missing was grayed out. But then when I load in multiple, we have that missing come up. This is just informational to show you um, to perform projection, and that, like uh, to predict what our wash attribute values are going to be. We require that those attributes are in every single one of your files. So if an attribute like fixed carbon, so, you know, essentially a column of these, a column of one of these files is missing. So in one of the wash files I loaded, fixed carbon was missing. We do not allow the, you to perform analysis on that. Then, So that has to be in there if you want to uh, perform analysis on it.
and perform predictions on it. Okay, that's everything in the wash file settings. Next is this. We actually load in at the start of the command, but you can change if you wanted to uh, which drill holes were loaded in. Uh, you see that it's 10 even though we selected two drill holes. That's because number of drill hole lithology entries. So every single drill hole strata bed combination has its own data information and will perform analysis on it separately. So there are five strata here on two drill holes. Therefore, we have 10. If I select all five, we have the 25 entries. And we see here this number in this spreadsheet in the outputs. After we perform our calculations, uh, we'll tell you which failed these targets, which passed these targets, and uh, which are passing the raw targets, which are passing the processing targets. And... Um, and that kind of tells you the information on whether it's raw acceptability. But these numbers should always add up to this. So that's just going to tell you what happened with the data that you entered in. So now we're at the calculation options. So you have two options. Uh, you can either wash all of your input material at a fixed density, wash density. Here we're going to use 1.55. We always need to have this wash density be within your actual density range. If you do the calculate, I'll just move up to the closest range point where uh, you had entered information. Um, and if you do the maximize yield, we lose this calculate option button. And we lose that because if you're going to calculate maximize yield, you need at least some targets to understand how that yield is going to be maximized because otherwise if you just want to maximize the yield just increase don't even wash it <laughs> that'll give you the most volume of material and the yield being just the output tons versus your input tons so i'm going to leave maximize yield on and we have all of these targets i'll just describe uh so a target means essentially you have you set for an attribute, a conditional, like it has to be greater than 20, let's say. And all of these targets have to be met at once. So it has to be, oh, that's less than 20. Greater than 20, less than 30. And if it is satisfied, if these conditions are satisfied for raw targets, we will not go on to wash these values. We've stated if you make the raw targets, you're saying, this uh, material, if we create a material type that has these values, we will send it off to our uh, customer. So we don't even bother processing if you pass the raw targets. Uh, for processing targets, this is targets you'll have on your float material and sink material. So we may, let me just load in some previous so here we want to we have a uh, I created raw targets of acceptability, and we want to our customer wants exactly 25 um, um, millijoules per kilogram of material, and maybe there's some new environmental regulations, so our total sulfur has to be below a certain value. These targets are not either or, they're and conditions. So this has to be met and this has to be met for an item to be processed. If some input material doesn't meet this raw target and cannot satisfy both of these targets post wash, it will not be processed. We'll just assume it's left in ground or put to a waste dump and we don't do any predictions on it. So here, Everything, there isn't a condition of failing target, but if I make this uh, impossible, where I say it has to be less than zero, calculate. Now we have nothing passing the processing targets. Two of our strata pass the raw targets, and five of them just fail the targets. And for each of these guys you have, it's pretty straightforward to add target, adds the row, delete target, deletes the row, and then you can save and load out these little files. They save as a dot trgt.target minus the vowels so 
and then you can load it in for later use. So that is with the um, maximizing yield. Oh yeah, because we let's delete that target. Let's calculate. So since the maximize yield setting is selected, we will find the wash density at which this has the greatest, uh, the highest wash density, because that'll produce the most amount of material, which increases our yield, which satisfies. We see the calorific value is equal to 25, and for the raw information for the raw target, we can see that our average. These are all average values in the outputs, not individual uh, drill hole results. Uh, so yeah, all of this, all of these guys are informational. And the wash density, min, max, the range. Um, so now we can get to some of our more detailed outputs that you'll be working with. The output, the stratocalc value, will output one of the STC file values. You see, you have this option of output a float and sync. That is done because we want to keep the attribute names consistent in our STC files. We don't want to have to do, you know, a calorific value underscore float underscore sync. So we leave it on the user to remember which are float values. And we'll take a look at that and I'll show you some differences so you can tell what was a float and what was a sync. So I will save settings. I'll put stratocalc, and this is our sync, save. So there's another, this button right here also affects um, the SCC file values and what is output. Here you see everything is selected. Attributes, keep missing attributes and attributes missing, missing wash data to keep. So in your input drill holes, if you had some attributes which were not included in your wash file settings, uh, in your wash files, normally we will throw that out if you do not have this checked. But if you have it checked, it will be kept. There is always an attempt to find the density attribute because that is very critical for performing tonnage analysis. So we'll look through the attributes and even if you unselect this, we'll probably still save density if, as long as you have it named density or DEN or DENS, we'll try and keep that. But let's say for BTU or something less common, we don't check every single attribute and save it. You'll ha you can come in here, manually select that, and it will not uh, be dumped in the STC file. So we'll hit OK. Um, the other output I'll show here, pretty straightforward. We'll go back to the STC file results in a little bit. Oh, the other I'll show you. Uh, we'll go through and I'll take a step back and show you what else you can do with a fixed. Um, so the other output we have is report results, which allows you to just get a quick you know, spreadsheet view in an HTML. This is a nice quick view, or you can even get it in an Excel file just of your drill hole. You can see what the values of each item were as opposed to just the uh, overview averages I was showing before. So one thing to notice about the float and sync, that the yield always adds up to 1 for each of the drill holes. So the float has 0.39 out of 1 of the input material, and that is 0.61. And they share the same wash density. And then also, wash material type is going to be float, sync, or the raw. So raw items have a wash density of zero and a yield of one because that's all of the original material. Okay, and then calculation details will show you all of the information that pretty much gets generated in the calculation to help you determine if you're seeing something that you don't think should be happening. Why am I not getting missing wash file attributes? You know, why am I not seeing that? in these attributes down here. We'll just tell you explicitly. You can skip hitting that button. Common wash file attributes. Uh, calorific, they'll just state your targets that you use. This will help you if you have an STC file or some results. You can reference this and say, how did I, what were the settings I used to calculate this as well? And we show 
drill lithology with target attributes matching to wash file. So we tell you which wash file, because you can load in multiple wash files, which wash file was used which, with which drill hole to um, calculate your output attributes. And then we'll show you the raw target, what their attributes were, We'll show you what the values of the raw, of which uh, drill holes, which were processed. We'll show you the original raw values and then what their float and sync attributes are as well. So this just helps you see which steps were taken and be a nice back reference. But the report results can be nice because it will work with your current Excel workflows. So I will save this setting. So I'll just say new. And when you save the settings file, every setting will be saved except the number of drill holes that you'll have to select each time. So new.awash was saved. And let's say we wanted to load something. So if you're going to um, maximize yield, you need targets because your yield maximization has to you know, fall within and respect targets. But when you do fixed, Wash density, you don't necessarily require the targets. Well, that's something I'd wanted to point out earlier. And that should be good. I will now just show you that the SCT, how you can view the SCC files. So the SBF float and sync were what we had just created. And we'll see we output the wash density, you'll have the yield. 0.38 out of 1. These, and BTU, if you remember, was one of the dropped missing attributes. These weren't washed. These will be the same as if you just select it and load it. And density is also saved. Those were washed. So if we just do CH and TERP, select on screen drill holes, we'll see that the BTU and the density were the same. And this, we had shown you the sink, the float. If we show you the sink, the yield is there. So that should be everything you need to get it up and running with the apply wash command. If you have any issues, this is a new command, please email us at our support. We're happy to continue working on this command and make sure it's satisfying the customer needs. Thank you.